For today's video, I am finally getting started on the electrical project I have planned for this boat. The first is going to be getting the new Power Queen lithium battery installed, set up with a lithium charger, as well as install an automatic bilge pump from Better Boat, and possibly set up a switch panel. Now, if you guys saw the previous video on the 100 amp hour Power Queen battery, I was really happy with not only its quality, but its performance. I have yet to run it out at all. I have taken it on the boat multiple days without charging it. I have run spot lock all day. I have run the navigation, the stereo system. Literally, that battery just goes and goes and goes. I absolutely love it. I've had no issues with it. I'm really excited to see how this one performs. All right, so just like the 100 amp hour, we get ourselves a little booklet with some info here. We have our post studs. Oh, there it is. It is tiny. Man, this is awesome. Oh, it is super light. Look at that. Holy crap, that is ridiculous. This is definitely a smaller form factor. Uh, than a regular car battery or marine battery. Uh, this could be a great space saver as well as a great weight saver. I am really excited to get this installed. Go ahead and throw these studs on. Nice lock nuts on them, so not going anywhere. Perfect. I'm gonna go weigh it real quick and I'll let you guys know exactly how much it weighs. It weighs exactly 12.2 pounds. If you remember the other video where we weighed the uh, marine batteries, I think those were around and we're sitting at 51.4 pounds. Huge weight savings, awesome small form factor, really, really cool. Uh, usually I do NOCO battery chargers, the onboard ones, and I really, really like them. But because this boat is gonna be way more modular, I wanted to have something where I'll be able to take a lot of this stuff with me without having to uninstall it from the boat. So this here is a lithium battery charger. This is much, much, much more affordable than a NOCO. I can't say if it's gonna perform well, better or worse. I haven't tried it yet, but I did wanna test it out. If it ends up being a good charger, I'll throw a link in the description for you guys to check it out. If I have any issues with it, you'll know by the end of this video because I'm gonna be testing it out. Nothing says quality like naming your product after a sewer. Okay, well, I might be eating my words because this actually feels pretty, oh, uh, it's actually a lot lighter than I thought. I was gonna say, it felt pretty hefty at first, but I think it's just all of the cabling together. Yeah, I mean, I think that this thing was like, I'll have to check on the price. You know what, I'll throw the price up on the screen now. I forgot what I paid for it, but I know that it was a fraction of what a NOCO was. So if it's uh, affordable enough, it, it might be worth it here. It has uh, two different ends on it. You can set it up so it's installed where you don't have to clip them on. This is really helpful if you wanna make this an onboard charger or you can use the clamps if you want it to be removable and take it from battery to battery. Um, it is only a five amp charger. That's usually the chargers I go with with the NOCOs because for one, I don't really ever need speed charging. It's usually I plug the boat in the night before I'm going somewhere and by the morning, you know, the batteries are fine. And the more amperage, the more money you're paying. And also the faster you charge a battery, the more heat that gets generated and the quicker it can degrade. So you actually extend the life of your batteries by charging them a little bit slower. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna run with the clamps for now and see if this charges up and what kind of charge state it's at. See if we get any lights. So we can change the mode. I have it set to lithium. Okay, so lead acid or lithium. We're gonna go to lithium. Do red to red, black to black. And let's see if we get something here. So far, so good. It read the battery charge, it's charging. We're not getting any errors or issues. So we'll go ahead and leave this on for now and uh, we'll check back on this when we're ready to install it. So this is something that I'm really excited to try. I know it is just an auto bilge pump, but this is by uh, a company called Better Boat. I've been working with them for the better half of about two years now, uh, ever since I started really getting into the John Boat stuff. And uh, every product I've used by them has worked out really, really well for me. And that has nothing to do with any kind of like sponsorships or anything like that. I've tried their retractable transom straps. I've tried some of their cleaning products. The entire last boat that I did all the epoxy on the wood was done with their epoxy. Honestly, I've just had nothing but 
are great experiences with their products. So I'll throw a link in the description for you guys to check this out for yourself. This is the 1100 gallon per hour versions. A lot of people might recommend for a smaller boat to use a smaller bilge pump, but I feel the exact opposite way. The smaller your boat, the quicker you need to get excess water out of the boat. So if you ever get in a situation where you're cruising real hard and you have to stop real hard and you get a huge splash over your transom, you wanna get that water out of your boat as quick as possible. When you need a bilge pump, you need the biggest bilge pump you can get. They also sell a bilge pump in installation kit. They didn't include that with this here, so I'm gonna be coming up with my own DIY solution for that. Uh, I used this in another boat before, that's why I had some left over. But this is basically, uh, I believe it's a drain hose for a washing machine or something like that. On the one end, it has this accordion style connector. And what's cool about it is that when you install it to your bilge pump and you hang it over your transom, you can actually point it straight down so it hooks right on and it makes installation really easy. So I actually used the other half of this with the other end that was like that for another bilge pump. And I'm gonna be using this half for this boat. Now normally with bilge pumps, they come with something in the area down here. Okay, this one didn't have it. Normally there's like a little piece of foam down here that keeps this from bouncing around. I guess they didn't have that in this one. So that's just something you wanna check before you install your bilge pump. It would really stink to get it all installed and then it doesn't work because there's a piece of foam on the inside. This is a tester knob here, which basically just flips up the uh, float switch. So once you do get this installed and you wanna make sure everything's working right, you can just twist this and if it clicks and starts running, you know your float switch is working. All right, so just a quick update on the sewer battery charger. Seems like it's doing fine. It looks like I got it to 100%. I got my voltage tester here, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like at full charge. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up right here so you guys can see also. All right, so first thing I wanna test is the charging voltage. So it is actually charging a little bit more on the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what we're running at for our voltage. It should be around 14 or so. 13.9, 14. Okay, so that's good. So the, uh, the charging voltage is around 14, a little over 14, uh, which is correct. Okay, so this is looking really good. Uh, yeah, so the sewer battery charger overall, it's looking really good. It was able to top off our battery and we're charging at the correct voltages. I can safely recommend this to you guys now. It is charging a lithium battery as expected. Um, I can't comment on its long-term use, but if I do have any issues with this, I'll be sure to update uh, the pinned comment just in case, like if it fails in a week, I wanna let you guys know that. But as of right now, I'll throw a link in the description if you guys wanna check this out. All right, let's get uh, back to the build pump install. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, this battery is so small back here. Now one of the cool things that I got with the motor for this is that it has an adjustable tiller handle. It's gonna allow me to sit directly in the center line of the boat. So weight balance on left and right is gonna be really important. So with that being said, I wanna make sure that I am positioning everything in a way that keeps it even. <sighs> the more I play around with this, the more I think just coming back on this side next to the drain plug might be the best option. Then I could probably just do the battery next to it. Oh yeah, more than enough room for the battery and then the gas tank on that side. About right here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. So now as you can see here, let me uh, lower you down a little bit. Now with the, uh, the hose kind of in place here, you can see how this is gonna sit way more flush. And this is gonna install super easy. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this mounted to the floor and then we'll work on the wiring. All right, so a good rule of thumb is whenever you're working with adhesives of any kind, be it foam or double-sided tape or Velcro or anything like that, get yourself a good bottle of isopropyl alcohol and wipe down each surface before you do it. And I guarantee you, your connections are gonna last much longer than if you didn't prep your surface. So with that said, I got some alcohol on the rag here. And even though it looks clean, I'm just gonna wipe it down. So once you get your surface here clean, it'll dry to a nice matte finish and that's where you know it's ready. And now also you're gonna to wanna to do the same to your surface. Whether it's painted or not, you still wanna get any kind of loose debris um, or shine, any kind of oils that came to the surface of your paint. And that will make this connection work much better. I think I'm just gonna use some double-sided tape for this. This stuff is uh, ridiculously strong but it can still get pulled off if you need to. It just might take a little paint with it. So 
So I'm just gonna use a small piece for this. I'm gonna stick it right down the center here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that tape. And I want it as far back as I can get it. And pretty much right there is gonna be my installation spot. I like that a lot. It keeps it nice and out of the way. Uh, the hose can route right down the back here now so it's not taking up too much space. And most importantly, now we have a bilge pump. So taking this out on the water just got 10 times safer. So I'm happy with that. Now for the battery, I'm gonna do something similar except I'm gonna be using this industrial strength Velcro. This stuff is absolutely insane. You will likely pull your paint off before you even separate Velcro like this. This is made for very high strength applications. So basically we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get myself a strip of Velcro. I'm gonna attach them together and then I'm gonna apply it to the bottom of the battery. And then I'm just gonna position it in place, put it down, and then it'll be installed. Um, I wanna use Velcro for the battery because the battery may come in and out of the boat for various reasons. Same thing with the battery. We're gonna go ahead and wipe the battery surface down. Right down the center where I'm applying the Velcro. Put the tape off here, get that applied right down the center of the battery. Okay, and then I'm going to fit it in place first. Oh yeah, that fits absolutely perfect right there. Uh, do I want it like this or do I want it like that? Nope, we'll do it like, let's do it like that. Pull this piece off and set this in place. And then just push down on that a little bit to let the adhesive grab onto both the battery and the floor. Okay, and with that, the battery is now installed. Like I said, I'm pulling pretty hard right now and it's not coming off. So yeah, to, uh, to break the Velcro seal, you actually have to like, either twist it then pull it or grab it from one side and kind of like peel it off. But pulling straight up, that's where it has its most grip. All right, so now that we got our battery and bilge pump in place, uh, the next step is gonna be working on our wiring. So for an automatic bilge pump, you have three wires. The black wire is your ground, the wire with a stripe is your float switch, and the wire without a stripe is your power. So if you were just to directly connect the solid power wire with the negative, your bilge pump is just gonna run. This is something that you're gonna wanna tie to a switch of some kind. Now, if you didn't wanna do a switch or you didn't have a switch to do, you can still use the float switch option where if we attach the float switch wire, this is only gonna run when the float switch triggers. We can test this by turning this little knob to trigger the switch and then it activates only when the switch is up. So for right now, the main thing I wanna do is wire up the automatic section. I don't have uh, the switch panel installed yet, so I'm not gonna worry about the switches until I get uh, a little bit further along with some other things here. So the first thing I wanna do to get this installed is attach some uh, ring connectors to the ends of the leads here. Uh, that way these will connect nice and easy onto the battery, keep everything nice and clean for us. Now, since we're gonna be using a lot of heat shrink here, I'm, I'm taking out my mini hot air station. This is basically like a little mini heat gun. It heats up really, really fast. It has a cool, convenient mount that whenever you wanna uh, stop using it for a moment, you just set it on here and it turns itself off. And then when you pick it back up, it turns itself on. It's uh, really convenient when you're working on a lot of wiring. It's probably one of the best purchases I made for wiring. Um, the only other one that would rival it is probably an automatic wire stripper. <laughs> These are also super convenient and then the different heat shrink connectors I'm about to go over. So if you guys are planning on doing a lot of wiring, I highly recommend getting one of these. Don't do it to yourself with like a torch or a lighter or uh, a big bulky heat gun. This makes it so much easier and these things are like 20 bucks. It was such a great investment for uh, how much time it saved me over time. Taking up one of these lead screws here to make sure we're using the appropriate size ring connector. These are one of the other products that I said have worked out really well. These are waterproof ring connectors. I use these on any connection I can around the boat. Just keeps everything nice and waterproof and uh, definitely fights back corrosion. 
You just wanna make sure you're using the right ring connector for the size of the bolt you're attaching it to. So that'll work pretty good. It matches on there really well. This is a marine heat shrink, so it has an adhesive on the inside that melts and waterproofs everything. We're gonna thread that on first. Then we're gonna thread on our ring connector. We're gonna use our automatic wire stripper here and crimp it. On your wire crimper, if you've not used one before for this kind of stuff, there are colored dots that correspond to the colored connectors you're using. This is all kind of standard across wiring. We have a red connector, so it's gonna go in the red crimping spot here. And then when I squeeze it, it's gonna crimp it onto the wire so you have a good mechanical connection. Then we're gonna heat shrink it, which is gonna be a second mechanical connection. And then the third one will be the actual heat shrink material. So this does not take long to heat up. There we go, that was in real time, no cutting. And then you'll see this just kind of form around the wire. So there we go, that handles that. If you can kind of see it on the camera, it's probably gonna to be too blurry. But uh, you can see a little bit of glue came out the bottom of the connector that will help with the waterproofing and then now we just slide our heat shrink on top and then the same thing heat shrink it on and then now this will connect right onto the battery stud like this there you go so i'm going to go ahead and do this to the uh, float switch connection now and then we'll wire it up and make sure everything's working one nice thing about the different colored heat shrinks um, i'll show you this pack i got here this uh, has all different colors, so you can match the wires that you're doing, or if you want red and black to show positive and negative. It helps keep things visually organized for you, considering the cables are gray. This way you know it's still a positive cable. All right, so now that we got these wires on here, we'll just go ahead and throw them on the studs, and then we can test everything out and make sure it all works. All right, with this all connected, now we can use the tester knob on the actual pilge pump itself. And there you go, the bilge pump is now officially installed and wired up. Overall, not very hard. When you got the right tools and the right materials, it makes it so, so much easier. All right, now the battery and bilge pump have been officially installed. As you can see, a mess develops very quickly with wiring. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the battery and the bilge pump so far. It installed really easy, it tested really well. Uh, both of these are from brands that I trust. So overall, that was a really great start to the wiring. The sewer, <laughs> I still can't get over the name. The sewer battery charger here also worked really well. The price on this was ridiculously cheap. So if you're in need of a lithium battery charger, I can definitely recommend it. Originally, I was gonna go ahead and work on the trolling motor, but I think I might hold off on that now because I'm kind of debating between a couple different options. Basically, I'm debating between making my uh, spot lock trolling motor module. Uh, so it'll go on this boat over here. Uh, I can kind of swap it back and forth. But this boat also came with a 55 pound thrust trolling motor tiller steer that I may add to the back of the boat. I really, really liked that on my 1436 before. So that's just an option that I'm, um, I'm kind of playing around with. Uh, that kind of setup would make everything a lot easier. I wouldn't have to run wires to the front of the boat like that um, or buy at this point thicker gauge cable. So um, just to keep this budget build budget, I may just go with the tiller steer and then I might save that project for another one I have coming up after this. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna be working on is definitely some type of flooring. I really wanna get the EVA foam everywhere. I think that's gonna look really, really killer. Um, I wanna get my rails finished painting. And then basically it's just floors, hatches, switch panel, and then any goodies that I decide to add. Uh, I do have some seat mounts that need to go back on. I don't have seats for the boat yet. Uh, the ones that came with it were not in the best condition, so I ended up just selling those originally. So I'm on the lookout for some new seats. I'm all right, well, if you guys found this helpful, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna follow along with this Jumbo build and see what I got coming up for the electronics and everything else I'm trying to figure out still, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or any feedback on anything I'm doing on the boat, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks for watching.